you and good afternoon everyone and welcome to Pratap Snacks FI24 and fourth quarter call. Uh, from the management today, we have Mr. Amit Kumar, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Sumit Sharma, uh, CFO of the company. Uh, we'll start with the opening remarks uh, from the management, post which uh, we'll take up uh, Q&A. So I'd like to hand over to the management now. Uh, over to you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you, Manshu. Good afternoon to all the participants, and thanks for joining our Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. I trust all of you have reviewed our earnings document, which was shared earlier. We have reported a resilient performance in Q4-24, despite the challenging macroeconomic conditions and persistent inflation which have impacted consumer behavior. We reported sales of 387 crores in Q4, Urban areas continue to outspend rural areas during the quarter. However, there are initial signs of revival in rural spending on a sequential basis. Two key highlights of our top line performance are maintaining of the leadership position in the extruded effect category, as well as continuing to drive robust growth in the Namkin category, which remains a primary focus area for us. These accomplishments have been driven by initiatives such as range selling and expanding of retail reach. I am most pleased to share the stellar EBITDA performance in Q4-24. EBITDA was Rs. 35.5 crores, a robust 87% increase compared to Q4-23. We have delivered an EBITDA margin of 9.1% in Q4, the highest in the last 26 quarters. We have been very focused on our margin performance and undertook many steps to structurally improve the margin. Additionally, a decline in some input prices coupled with process optimization contributed to improve profitability. The improvement in EBITDA has also filtered down into PAT. In Q4, PAT reached rupees 12.4 crores, marking a 30% year-over-year increase compared to the adjusted PAT of rupees 9.5 crores in Q4-23. Please note the one-offs in the PAT last year, which are explained in note one on slide 32 of our investor presentation. If we look at the full year performance, revenue was 1610 crores in 24 compared to 1642 crores last year, impacted by the softer demand environment. However, there was much progress on improving our profitability as the company reported its highest ever annual EBIT of rupees 141 crores in 24, which is higher by 126% on a year to year basis. Throughout 23 24, the EBITDA margin was consistently above 8% in each quarter and we have reported a margin of 8.7% for the full year, indicating the structural and sustainable improvement in margins. Thus, margin enhancement is due to compression of the distribution structure over the last two years, as well as a lot of efforts on process improvement, cost optimization, and yield enhancement. There has been some support from lower prices of certain inputs. Profit after tax has grown 52x from 1 crore to 53.1 crore in 24 on a like-for-like -like basis, despite higher depreciation. In light of this performance, the board of directors has recommended a dividend of 40% per share with a face value of rupees 5, amounting to rupees 2 per share. We are taking several steps to accelerate growth. This includes the implementation of Salesforce automation, which is already loaded out across a substantial proportion of our market. We now have access to richer and real-time data, which will lead to improved productivity of sales team, identification of gaps, and also help to improve the overall strategy and decision-making ability. This will be extended across all locations this year. We are augmenting our sales channels by entering into modern trade and quick commerce channels, which will complement our comprehensive presence in traditional distribution channels. We are already onboarded into some of the leading supermarkets and hypermarket chains, allowing advanced stage of discussion with several quick commerce platforms. In terms of our product portfolio, we will look to continue to perform well in extruded snacks with focus on pellet snacks. Another strategic initiative remains increasing the share of numkins in our revenue mix. The initial progress on increasing numkins will receive further momentum from our initiative of range selling. Sales both automation and entry into modern trade and quick commerce. Further, we are undertaking efforts towards more comprehensive coverage across select markets and we look into address pockets of under penetration. We believe this will help us to further enhance our reach. We are also working on introducing some premium offerings under the Better for You range of products. This 
this will help us to drive our objective of large pack size and will also benefit from our entry into modern trade and quick commerce. As part of the ongoing upgradation and enhancement of product range, we plan to launch new flavors such as sizzling hot, which are a spicy flavor across product categories of extruded effects and potato chips. These are some new offerings lined up for launch in the extruded effects and nimkin categories. We have recently commissioned new facilities in Jammu and Rajkot. The Jammu facility will help us to expand our reach in that region, especially across JNK and Punjab. In Rajkot too, we will be manufacturing Falahari mixtures and peanuts which will help to expand our product range. Looking ahead to FI25, we are optimizing given the initial signs of improved rural demand, the projections of a normal monsoon will provide further momentum to this trend. We are confident that our initiatives across sales force automation, range selling, entry into modern trade and quick commerce, as well as augmentation to our traditional product portfolio, will help us to drive accelerated growth in top line. On that note, I conclude my remarks and we can open the floor for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Dipen Shankar with Trust Line. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on strong profitability and return ratios. Uh, so, firstly, from my side, uh, so what are the challenges uh, we face uh, in uh, reporting the strong double-digit growth in uh, uh, revenues? And how do we see uh, industry growth uh, uh, per se uh, in the past year? So, if you see overall the rural market and the urban market with a low restricted income has been a big problem for all the companies. We don't have the exact number of our competitors, but there has been there will definitely there has been pain for most of the companies in rural segment and the lower state income. But seeing the current scenario and the months which have passed on, the things are improving a lot. We think that this year probably we can deliver double digit growth. Okay, okay. And uh, Sir, can you please uh, throw some light on uh, each uh, categories uh, like extrusion and then potato, uh, sweet uh, and numpkin se uh, segments? How, how do we see uh, growth growth over there? So, extruded segment, we are the leader in the extruded segment in the country and we feel that most of the growth in the near future should come from extruded snacks, mainly pellets and numpkin category. Namkin in yellow diamond has done very well for us for the last year also. With almost zero growth also, the Namkin category grew almost 16% for the year. The contribution was 16%, right, sir, or growth? The growth, growth in Namkin. The contribution, exact number of product-wise, the contribution was 16%. Contribution is also 16 uh, but growth for yellow diamond Namkin. So Namkin has uh, yellow diamond and our uh, two kind of portfolio. Our is primarily a regional Namkin uh, targeted to Gujarat market. And why the Namkin is more national variant? We are driving okay. the range selling. So the outlets where we are available, but the Namkin range is not available. We are pushing uh, uh, Namkin on uh, existing outlets, which is helping us to, to drive the Namkin growth. Okay. So, so if we are seeing such strong growth in uh, Namkin, so, so any other segment which is uh, facing negative growth uh, as such? I think that all other sectors were basically they were okay, they were muted growth because volume wise we were at zero growth last year. So not much significant difference, but Namkin has done better than all other products. Okay. In the, in the okay. coming year we are looking more growth from the extruded effect than Namkin. Okay. And how about this uh, sweet portfolio, sir? We we had uh, higher uh, uh, growth ambitions on the sweet portfolio uh, earlier. So are are we still uh, uh, hoping uh, sweet portfolio to increase substantially in the coming years? A sweet portfolio has seen a muted growth. We don't see any much significant growth in the sweet segment right now. Okay. Okay. Thank 
okay. are trying okay. different format yeah. for the film segment, but not not success yet. Okay, okay. And how about this uh, offtake on uh, larger packs uh, uh, we were discussing last year, sir? So uh, is that uh, segment uh, contribution improving overall sales? Yeah, that that sales contribution is also improving, and with uh, getting entry into modern trades, that contribution should substantially improve in the times to come. We have got listed ourselves on the DMART and Reliance. And there we are selling a 50 rupee pack compared to the 5 rupee pack what we sell at them. Okay, so what is its uh, contribution currently? With entry, yes, sir. With entry into modern trade and with both quick commerce, I think the large uh, MRP pack contribution will definitely increase. Okay, so what is its contribution currently, and what was it last year, sir? So it's different for different segment. I think potato chip it is close to 25-30 percent, the more than five rupee pack. For extruded snacks and other packet it is mainly five rupees only. So overall contribution is okay. probably close to 12-13 percent, and I think that can go up to 25-30 percent in two years time. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. I'll join back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dipen. Thank you. Next question comes on the line of uh, Prakash Kapadia from Spark PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, a couple of questions from my end. Uh, you know, technically, what has been our rural and urban mix to total sales? If you can share that uh, in FY24. Uh, and you know, secondly, Pepsi is trying to change the base oil from palm oil to a blend of. sunflower oil and palm oil so what impact does it have on the industry and a player like us and what do you think will be the consumers reaction i have few more questions well, should i continue or will yeah. you take yeah. them so let let me answer the first two question and probably we'll go to the third and fourth one sure. from the mix side it is almost 50 50% for the rural and urban market not much different but in urban market also since we are in the 5 rupee segment category we are majorly catering to lower strata income people so i think there was pain there also last year which we seen is improved from uh, this current year on the oil side basically we current use palm oil and cotton seed oil and uh, we believe they are the one of the best oil for the frying medium across the world but since their consumer behavior is don't when Pepsi launches and the Frito Lay launches and they advertise a lot. I think uh, we will have few varieties in sunflower also in times to come. But I don't see any health benefit out of coming out of it. Okay, so the positioning need not be a healthy product, is what you are saying. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, so there is a lot of debate going on across the world on the quality of oil. I believe <laughs> most of the oils are not that good for health. understood and you know if you could help us understand the pli scheme you know there was some delay last year what were the challenges as of now you know where are we in terms of the pli scheme and if you could help us understand the road ahead on that and you know in your remarks you mentioned about the jnk plant so uh given that it is started what is the annual benefit what kind of capex we have done when do you know some of these benefits come to the pnl if you could give some insights that will be helpful sure so pli there was an obligation to invest uh, almost uh, 105 crore for capex and the deadline was to in- complete that investment by end of uh, march 24 so we have completed our investment uh, before the deadline and we commissioned two new plants and there was some brownfield uh, capex so with regard to that investment we have commissioned two new facilities one is jammu and second is uh, the new unit in rajkot uh, we need to uh, uh, achieve some sales threshold to get the pli benefit uh, so we are aspiring for that we are targeting uh, to achieve that number the benefit is available till fy 20 Seven. Uh, so another four years, the benefit will be available. Uh, as far as Jammu is concerned, Jammu plant was commissioned by end of March, and uh, it's it's op- 
operational. The overall capacity for Jammu facility is roughly about 160 odd crore at a pool capacity utilization. The idea to use Jammu facility to develop the nearby market uh, like JNK, Punjab, and uh, Himachal, because those markets uh, historically uh, uh, were not that strong for us because of logistic uh, issues. We were not able to supply earlier. So Jammu facility will help us to uh, maintain the consistent supply to these markets. The products we are planning in Jammu are extruded. Uh, so pallet, uh, cough and rings and uh, chulbule will be manufactured at Jammu location. And rest of the items will be supplied from other locations. So we will also have a hub in Jammu to maintain the full range of all the products. In addition to PLI benefit, there are another benefit linked to Jammu investment. Uh, Jammu total investment was about 22, 23 odd crore. So as for the Jammu incentive scheme, uh, whatever is the eligible investment, uh, uh, we will be able to get 300% of that investment. So as for our calculation, the eligible investment is about uh, 18 uh, to 19 crore. Uh, so three times, uh, that means about uh, 56, 57 crore kind of benefit will be available over the period of 10 years. And this is, this is uh, uh, basically the GST linked incentive. So whatever GST is charged in the invoice uh, will be getting equivalent to that benefit subject to the maximum cap of uh, the amount which I mentioned. Okay. And, and you know, you mentioned there is a sales threshold for the PLI scheme. So how does that work? Is there a absolute number or a certain growth number which you have to achieve year on year till FY27? So there is a there is a CAGR uh, which has to be maintained um, uh, over the base year. So the base year was FY20, and uh, we need to maintain at least 10% CAGR from FY20. So that that's how the threshold sales is calculated. All the products are eligible under PLI in our case, except the potato chips. Potato chips is not eligible under the PLI scheme for the incentive benefit. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if I understand this correctly, going forward from FY25, some of these benefits will start accruing to us. Yeah, that is what we are targeting. Okay, fine. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Arman with Blue Sky Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, before we told that we will be targeting around 500 crore top line, however, in Q2 and install, you clarified that it may take uh, two more quarters. So already we are on Q3 and Q4 already have been over. So what's the timeline over there? When can we see a top line of 500 crore down? That is my first question. And the second question, which you have already answered, but just wanted to clarify once again that... Uh, like PepsiCo, one of the previous participants has asked about the palm oil and sunflower blend oil. So our stand is clear that uh, that will not that, that doesn't hold any other health benefits. So what what we are using it's the best what can be possible. Is that so, sir? So I don't think we can say it's the best. The, all the oils have different kind of attributes, and people see it with a different lens. For frying medium, stability-wise, we believe palm oil is the best oil available in the world today. And all the major players in the country use only palm oil. Though during winter, we have to use cotton seed oil because of the low freezing point for palm oil. If they start using sunflower and they market it, I think it might give a different tangent to the market. So we are doing few trials at our laboratory to see what can be done. So current sunflower oil available in the country is not good for uh, frying. So you need a different kind of sunflower oil for to use to be used in frying. Okay. On the first question of revenue, we haven't hit that mark basically what we said last time. But uh, with the current 10% growth momentum, what we see for this year, hopefully this year we should see this number in probably Q2 or Q3. And and these margins levels are sustainable, sir? At this level, since we are already increasing our share of the Namkeen segment, which are comparatively better for us, so what kind of margin we can assume going forward? I think uh, the margins are sustainable on a 
on a full year basis. However, there will be some ups and downs in the commodity pricing. So uh, the quarterly, you may see some fluctuation. But uh, for the full year, we are confident that uh, these margins are sustainable because over the period we have done a lot of structural changes uh, in terms of uh, compressing the distribution network, in terms of uh, other uh, process re-engineering, including the change in recipe, uh, resizing the packet, resizing the, the corrugated boxes, etc. So those are permanent in nature. So those are uh, still with us. So for long term, for a full year basis, yeah, we are confident. But there may be some uh, variation on a quarter on quarter basis, subject to change in raw material pricing. Okay, got it. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Viraj Mahadevia with Money Grow India. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations on the operational efficiencies extraction in your business. Um, how are you so confident about the sale hitting 500 uh, crores per quarter? What are the specific initiatives you've taken to drive sales across categories for the organic business? And incrementally, what will come from the Jammu and Kashmir plan? So, uh, on the first question, basically, if we grew by 10%, the sales is almost close to 1860 crores. If we can grow better than that, probably, then Q3, we might be able to hit that number of 500. If you see historically, because Q2 and Q3 are normally better than Q1. Right. The initiative, what we have taken is basically getting deeper into distribution, and with the Jammu facility, we are targeting to cover whole of Punjab, Srinagar, and Jammu market, which was currently very weak in those markets because it was very difficult to supply from Indore and other locations. So with the more focus on Jammu plant and two different products from Gujarat and getting deeper distribution, we might be able to hit that number. What can Jammu plant like generate in terms of sales at the peak uh, utilization? Jammu can probably deliver sales of 10 crores a month, but there would be some sales which basically we are currently getting from Hisar and Karnal plant, which are the third-party third operation. So some of that production might shift to Jammu, but the, we can easily get sales of 10 crores per month from the Jammu plant. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Bhavik Shah with MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Congratulations on good rate of margins. So my question is, what kind of uh, new business initiatives are we looking for the next one or two years? Can you just elaborate on some of the initiatives? Yes, yes. So first, basically, as I told in my opening remark also, so two things, major things what we have done in last one and a half months is basically get enrolled into ourselves into the modern trade and e-commerce. We have already started supplying in Reliance and Demart, and we got enrolled with Quick Commerce all the major three, four big agencies. That supply should probably start within a month's time from now. So these two initiatives, plus we are also targeting to get into export market. We recently got few orders from the Middle East, from the Oman market, and now we are getting into, there is a conference in Dubai in September, we are covering that conference also. And we are hopefully with these three initiatives, we should get a de definitely a decent number probably in a year's time. Plus, basically, in the current market, where, please. Yeah, no, just yes, please. Plus, this, these are the new initiatives what we are taking. Plus, basically, we are also targeting uh, to get deeper distribution with more range selling in the similar markets. Like, the, if you see, the, our extruded snacks is available in almost most of the outlets where we covered. But if you see the Namkin, it is still available only in 25% of the outlets. So if we can make Namkin available in all the outlets, it can definitely increase sales considerably. If, suppose, theoretically, we are available into 2 million outlets, that's for AC Nielsen number. Out of that, 84% outlets, they have uh, extruded effects. Only 35% have Namkin uh, just, uh, available with them, and 25% have Namkin available with them. With using technology and getting into SFA and DMS, if you can increase this number, sales can increase considerably. Right, sir. So, just, uh, so what kind of opportunity does export have? Like we can see an export market. Like so export, export, I think what kind of five, uh, yeah. I think probably in a year or two it can go anywhere between 50 to 100 crores. 
great sir Congratulations. That's the first thing on it. We have just started the field call. We have to learn a lot in export market. We have just started this. But I think the potential is to that, you know. Right, sir. Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Alsiha with Envision. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Alicia. Um, not Alsiha. Um, sir, uh, a couple of quarters back, we were talking about of RM prices, uh, local players have become more aggressive um, and with demand being weak, it was impacting our growth. So any um, comment on what is the competitive intensity like and is there particular segments, say potato chips, which is witnessing uh, maybe more competition than say Namkeen, any uh, comment or color on that? I think the competition, there's been a lot of competition in the market, no doubt about that. but. I Personally, in our few markets, we have seen more competition in the chip segment. A lot of plants basically come out in UP, basically they are trying to sell very cheap. But since the commodity prices have already gone down from last one year, now they are increasing a little bit. I think the competition intensity won't increase from here. So if you see AC Nielsen number, the local competition has taken almost 3% market share in last one and a half year. And I think that would be the peak according to me. maybe, you know, with these lower prices and because they've also set up the capacity, they'll try to maybe expand a little bit. Uh, they can't maybe take away some of more, some more of this. Hello? 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 Please go ahead with the question. Uh, hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, Alicia, you are audible. Just give me a moment. Yeah. Uh, speakers, uh, can you go ahead with the question? Yeah. Sorry, Alicia, we got disconnected. Can you please repeat the question? Sure. So I just wanted to know that you said that co local competition, say, you made 3% market share in one and a half year. Um, is in the oh. scope for them maybe to expand a little bit and continue to hit us at the lower price point uh, or maybe where distribution speak for the rest of the market? and they can eat away a little bit more into everybody's market share? I think it is difficult. If you see history also, past history also, whenever the raw material prices comes down, all the smaller players will pop up everywhere across the country. But they have that certain level, and I think they have already reached that level. Probably they can go up by 0.5% or more, but I don't see any significant change from here in the local competition. That's and my take on it. And how is the comp uh, competition in Namkeen? Because I believe last time also we were saying that Namkeen, the competition is, um, is aggressive. The competition is definitely aggressive in Namkeen, but with the, our presence available in the market, I think there is a lot of scope. In spite of zero volume growth, last year we grew Namkeen by 16% of ID Namkeen. And currently we are only available in 25% of the outlets where yellow diamond is available. So, the 20 lakh outlet is the 5 lakh outlet where we take Namkin and Pocha by. I think there is enough scope for us to get Namkin at a bigger range. Understood. And any aspiration or target that, you know, where do we expect now that we've completed the rejig of a distribution uh, network or model, this uh, 20 lakh um, outlets that we're present in, where do we expect this to go? And what outlet reach can Namkin reach, say, by the end of the year? I think we can definitely increase the outreach by 50% for Namkeen by end of the year. And overall outlet basically we are already on 2 million outlets or 2.2 million outlets. It is much better for us to get deeper into these outlets. Okay, understood. So the aim is to basically get deeper into these outlets rather than increasing the outlets with help of SFA and DMS. The Jammu and Kashmir plant, we're saying that it will help us um, uh, cater to the demand of uh, Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, and maybe a little bit more of the north. Will that not also lead to some amount of expansion in distribution reach, or this is covered in the 2.2? No, I, I think they're almost covered in 2.2. There will be a slight increase, but the fo company focus is more to get basically more or more sales from all the current outlets. Okay, best of luck. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Natik with An Anvil Alpha. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my question is, uh, you mentioned about uh, you know entering the Oman market. Can you talk a little bit about uh, you know uh, which are the other countries that we are looking at? Uh, you know, apart from Oman. Yeah. So the Middle East, basically, the crowd, there is a lot of Indian diaspora in the Middle East. So one of the buyers just came from Oman, basically they visited our plant and they gave order for a few containers. So we are talking to a few more companies in Middle East who can take to take distribution of our products. The only problem in export is basically you need a lot of time in labeling and all those things. But I think we can open all the Middle East countries in probably in next six months' time. But this is... Uh, Main uh, focus uh, is... Uh, uh, sorry. In our own brand, Yellow Diamond. Oh. In our own brand, Yellow Diamond only. Okay, okay. Sure. Uh, my second question is regarding, uh, you know, deeper penetration in uh, Jammu, Kashmir and Punjab from our Jammu facility. So I just wanted to ask, what, <coughs> sorry, uh, what would be our current, uh, you know, uh, sales number in deep, in this region and, uh, you know, eventually it could go until, uh, go up to 160 at peak. But, uh, you know, what was the uh, current uh, contribution? I think the monthly sales of JNK, Punjab, and Himachal market put together is close to three and a half crores currently. Which can go up and, uh, we tar uh, Yeah, probably it can double from here. The 10 includes basically that Hisar and Karnal plant. Basically, we have manufacturing a few things from Hisar and Karnal plant. So, uh, some products will be shifted from Jammu to there instead of getting the 3P operation because we already have the satellite facility. But in the current scenario, probably we can double, it will take some time, but we can double the sales from in these three states. Sure, sure. Is the monthly sale uh, what we're talking about? Got it. Uh, my last question is, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, Namkeen is currently present already in 5 lakh outlets out of, say, 20 lakh outlets. So my question is, uh, uh, why is it uh, taking, I mean, I've heard this on uh, previous calls also, so uh, why is it taking us longer to, you know, make it to, say, 8 or 10 lakh, you know? What, what exactly is taking uh, time? So there are two things, basically. For Namkeen, if you go into different regions, the taste changes quite a bit. So if you go to South India and East India, probably the flavor changes, the seasoning changes. So we are developing few seasoning from the local market. Secondly, we are producing namkeen only in Indore right now. The so distributor from Indore to Guwahati and Kerala is not that easy. The quality is taking more time. The first step is to get the product right for the different market and then probably get from Indore first and then start some production in Eastern India, which is giving very good attraction right now. Because all other products are manufactured at many different locations. Like chips is manufactured at four or five locations. Pellets is available from ten locations. The proximity of production to market plays a very important role. So that these are the two reasons we have not been able to do them across the country. Good. Thanks. That's all from myself. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Kunal Patel with Equaligence Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. So my first question is regarding PLI scheme. Uh, what is our base for FI25 PLI benefit? Uh, so the base is basically the FI25 you are asking or FI20 the original base uh, on which the uh, no, so so to avail benefits for uh, for financial year 25 what is our base revenue base on which you have to grow and yeah. uh, to get the benefits yeah the revenue base for FI25 is about uh, 1575 crore excluding potato chips okay and uh, we need to grow by 10% uh, on that right no, no, this is the base. This number, this is the threshold. Okay, this is the threshold. This number uh, is to be achieved. This number is to be achieved. Okay. So if I exclude uh, potato chips revenue from our base, uh, which is 1610 crores, so our revenue is close to around 1240 odd crores. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're saying from 20, uh, 1240, we have to achieve 1575 to avail the benefits. Is that right? The calculation is right or not? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. 
So essentially, 1600 odd crores revenue, assuming there is no growth on potato, should reach 1900 odd crores uh, in FY25. Yes, yes, mathematically that is correct. Uh, so where do you see this growth coming from? 300 odd crores, incremental. So, uh, and exponential, which is the major growth basically we're expecting from extruded ethnic pallets and Namkeen. These are the two categories which think we can grow maximum for us. But most of the categories are not growing uh, more than 10, 15 percent, 15 odd percent. Then mm -hmm. how, how we are going to achieve 25 percent growth? Uh, so I think the exact number is not 25 percent. The growth in the sector probably would be close to 20 percent. We don't have the exact number right now. It should be close to 20%. And I think if with all the initiative what we are taking, we are trying definitely to hit that number. So we are certainly gunning for this and we are aiming for this and we are working in that direction. And uh, we will accrue incentive only at the end of the year once we are able to hit that number. So we are not accruing on a quarterly basis uh, like what we did earlier. I am just trying to understand your previous statement where uh, you were assuming uh, 500 crores of top line in Q3 and Q4 to come. So if Q3 and Q4 base is 500 crores, then you have to grow significantly higher in uh, Q1 and Q2 for this year to achieve 1900 odd crores of revenue. Is this growth achievable? So I think, uh, as I said earlier, basically we are very, very confident of the double digit growth. If we can grow by 18 to 20 percent, we're definitely gunning for it. We can't commit right now. We're definitely gunning for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so coming to my second question, which is on margin. So how much more operational benefit is uh, benefit is available from all the initiatives we have taken over the last uh, few years, assuming stable oil, oil prices? So yeah. we are at 9.1 percent for this quarter. So what should be our exit? Uh, margin for FI 25? I'm not uh, uh, comment specifically on FI 25. I'll, I'll more give you some color on uh, what it will look like in next two years, three years time on a sustainable basis. Uh, so there are few few areas where still we see some potential that includes uh, distribution uh, channel cost. Uh, initially the channel cost was higher when there was a super stockist and when we shifted from three tier to two tier distribution model, we increased uh, margin for our existing distributor because uh, we didn't want to have any any hiccups uh, during the transition. So that potential is available and over the period the channel margin for the distributor will be reduced. So that will give some uh, realization benefit and that will also help uh, improving the EBITDA margin. Uh, so that one lever is available especially on the distribution channel side. The, another lever is available in the operational cost. There are some line items where we are driving uh, some efficiency program and cost cutting program. We are also taking uh, external help to drive this program, and those include uh, uh, essentially the labor cost, uh, logistic cost. Logistic is a big cost, which is about seven, seven and a half percent of the overall revenue. Uh, stores and consumable spares consumption. So these are few line items, uh, especially in the operation side, where we are driving the, the cost cutting and efficiency drives. So this will help us to get another uh, two to three percent savings uh, over the next two years' time. Uh, okay, and uh, finally, uh, sir, uh, we we are talking about export. So, does export also uh, get included in this PLI or not? Yes, that is included. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, what is our current utilization capacity utilization? Utilization level is about uh, fifty. 5% after having the additional capacity in Jammu and uh, Rajkot Unit 2. So okay. there, is, there, is, there is enough headroom available to drive the growth. So I don't think the capacity would be a constant. And going forward, we won't have any significant capacity for next two years. So I think the, the investment phase is over, which is already in place. Uh, okay. okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes on the line of Tushar Bora with MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Mr. Bora, please go ahead with your question. 
Sorry. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, a couple of points quickly. Uh, we ex- highlighted the initiatives that we want to do on modern trade and uh, some of the new uh, commerce uh, you know, uh, delivery sites. Can you just explain a little bit more qualitatively what uh, you know kind of initiatives we are taking there? And what kind of revenue potential it has, even if it will take maybe a few quarters to achieve it, but what kind of potential we think this channel has. Secondly, what kind of growth momentum we can hit uh, if we, uh, you know, if we are able to take the, let's say, double the penetration of uh, outlets for Namkeen, uh, and and also with the efforts on modern trade side, what kind of numbers can come from there also? First, on the modern take, if you talk about basically, if you see in the country, 60-70% volumes come from only two guys, Gmart and Reliance. We were basically not working with them. Probably we stopped working with them last year when the prices increased and there were the few problems at our end. We have just opened these two outlets. Gmart has started in Indore and Reliance has started in few locations. I think the potential could be close to 50 crores a year in these two outlets. The e-commerce, the, all the blankets, Swiggy and Swiggy Instamart blanket and Depto, they are already in the process of registration. I am not very sure about the number numbers we can achieve from those places, but probably it could be 50 lakhs a month. 50 lakhs a month to start with. Most can come from uh, Reliance and Kmart. Yes, please. So you think 50 lakhs a month to start with? Is, is the immediate potential. Right? To start with, from Blinkit and all this area. The potential could be much bigger, it's still to be explored, but I think the potential with uh, these two guys, basically we have already seen earlier, is much, much bigger. Okay, in the sir. modern trade, and, and, and uh, if we are able to double the penetration for Namkeen, or, uh, you know, let's say, we 50% also, if we are able to increase, like you highlighted for this year, uh, how much the, does that impact the, the sales on a full year basis? So if we increase if we increase the fifty percent outlet in Namkeen, it should give additional uh, sales of four to five percent. On the overall Namkeen base. And for the whole company. On the overall base, right. On the overall base. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, you said that uh, for us to increase penetration in the teams, uh, uh, we have to get the product placement right in terms of the seasoning and uh, taste, etc., as well as uh, uh, be able to ramp up manufacturing. Uh, do we have any timelines on both these initiatives and, and whether it is going to happen all at one shot or in a staggered way? What is the strategy that we are adopting, sir? So product, basically, we have already developed the product. Probably next two, three months, we'll launch the product across East India and South India because normally North and West India taste is very similar. Once the sales moment can get up in Eastern India, I think the second facility of Namkin probably we might have to put next year in Calcutta for the Eastern market. But it's very difficult to supply continuously from here, seeing the distance from here to Guwahati. So getting the right product at the right time is not easy. Okay. Uh, are we not looking at uh, any Namkeen manufacturing in the southern southern states, sir? Uh, not, not, not yet. Because southern market is very small for us in Namkeen category right now. East has grown quite a bit last year. So probably we start with East India. We are already talking to one or two, three P facilities in Eastern India. Let us ramp up the Eastern India and then probably we can look for the southern India market for Namkeen. Right, sir. One last, if I may. Uh, we in the presentation we mentioned uh, you know some certain products uh, being pruned out as well as uh, some new product innovations uh, uh, that we are working on. Uh, if you could maybe share more details, sir, around the same. So in the extruded snack segment, we have added few products, something like uh, a crazy product basically in the tomato flavor side. We have added few different flavors in potato chips and chilbule. If you see the trend worldwide across basically the Korean chili in Vogue across the world. So we launched three new flavors in the potato chips. That is chili cheese, uh, cheese flavor with some chili, Korean and Naga, Naga chili flavor. Similar thing we did with chulbule in two flavors. So these are the product range what we have added in the chili range in across the category. Secondly, we are w- working on some few healthy products, yeah, better for you products, in which we are doing makhana, 
the product has already been developed. So this this product like makana, protein puff, and peanut puff, which can go into modern trade also, e-commerce also, and export also. So these are the two range we are currently working on. For the regular market, the lower strata income and the BCD market, we have developed this chili flavor and few flavors uh, for modern trade, e-commerce, and export market. Mainly in makana, uh, protein puff, and uh, peanut flavor puff. Product has already been developed, it's still working on packaging. Probably it may take another two months to put this product into, into the market. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. I'll join back in queue for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Harsha Shah with Pandan AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the, PL, the PLI base for FY26 is FY22, right? Not FY20, for FY26. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, so FI, for FY26, the base would be FY22. So if our FY22 sales of eligible products was similar to FY20. Because of COVID, there was no growth, uh, unfortunately. So for FY26, the base will remain same. What is for FY25? So how much so do we have to money for in FY26 to be eligible for PLI? Just like you gave 1575 crores net of... Uh, almost, similar, uh, almost similar number. Uh, two, two, three crore here and there. But, uh, otherwise, largely it's a similar number. Like FY25. Similar close number. Close to 1575 crores. Yes, close to 1575 crores. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Arman with Blue Sky Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, just a bit of clarification because once before when I asked about the margin um, and when told about uh, like 8.7% what we have maintained for the full year will be maintained for the current year. However, when another participant asked the same question, we told I can't commit on that. But however, for two, three years, you are seeing 200 to 300 basis points improvement. So uh, I just wanted to clarify, what's our take on margin? Is this level of 8.7% a take maintainable? Also, when we said that our higher products, like uh, maybe for uh, large packets, for which we have currently 12% share, which will increase in eventually in two years to around 25%, doesn't that add more to our margins? And can we assume that 8.7% is a base case that continuously on overall basis for the full financial year, it should either maintain or it should improve from year on onwards? Uh, so, Arman, uh, uh, I'll reiterate that uh, margin, what we have got FI24, these are sustainable on a long-term basis and we don't don't uh, see any issue. However, on a quarterly basis, there may be some, some variation uh, depending upon the commodity pricing. But for full year basis, we are confident that these numbers are sustainable. Uh, uh, I think there was another question which was related to a fixed percentage of EBITDA margin, which I uh, I said, I cannot comment on that fixed percentage, that was double digit. But yeah, we are aspiring for that. Uh, but these level of margins are sustainable on a full year basis. Uh, for quarterly, there could be some variation, again, depending upon the raw material pricing. As I also mentioned in my earlier answer that there are few levers available for uh, margin expansion, both in distribution side as well as in operation side on which we are working. And those levers will help us to expand our margin uh, further from here. So that gives confidence to uh, get double-digit EBITDA margin on a sustainable basis. Okay. Thanks, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Himanchu. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks, sir. I just also had uh, just one uh, key question. If you could talk about the marketing and uh, promotion spends for the year and what's the outlook on this? Because I believe to boost growth we, and in light of competition, uh, we might have to increase our uh, marketing and promotion spends and any impact in case you would see on margins uh, on that front, sir. Last year, our marketing spend was close to 1.25%. This year, we are targeting to anywhere between 1.5 to 2%, and I don't think that will have any impact on the margin because that can be definitely taken up by the extra sales what we generate through advertisement. 
So no significant uh, gap should come because of increased advertisement cost. Mm -hmm. And and any any changes in the promotion uh, that you are seeing uh, maybe by the unorganized or local players which you need to match uh, has there been any significant change in the uh, channel margins or uh, promotions that you need to give out no so there has no there has been no change in the channel margin we have definitely reduced the channel margin like we discussed earlier but at the retailer margin it depends from area to area and market to market we might have to give few schemes depending on the competition but not significant enough which can change anything Understood, understood. And uh, so finally, uh, just one point on the overall. Uh, you said uh, you are running at about 55%. So uh, there, there is no capex, I believe, and cash flow generation remains strong for us. So in terms of capital allocation uh, going forward, I mean, uh, do, have we sort of what is our plan like? I mean, uh, would we be thinking of? In, I mean, uh, returning more cash to the shareholders, or maybe are we looking at some inorganic opportunities as well? We have a formal policy for this, uh, and uh, we will use this capital in the best possible uh, way to maximize the shareholders' wealth. So no, no concrete uh, plan yet, but we are evaluating. Uh, the best possible utilization of the surplus cash. Great. Got it, sir. That that would be all. Uh, all the best to you. Uh, I think we have one more question in the queue. Uh, Raju, if you can take that. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Ankit Minocha with MRLR Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to check on the pricing environment uh, that you've seen with the competition and uh, for the coming one or two quarters, are you also looking at uh, any sort of price increases from your end? We are not looking at any price increase in, increases right now because there is a lot of competition issue in the market. If you can sustain the same pricing, that would be better for us. But with the few products what we are launching in the premium segment and probably this or next quarter, we might get a better realization. Okay, and uh, thanks for that. And uh, sorry, I was a little late, so I might have missed this. Uh, have you shared any uh, sales and uh, EBITDA margin uh, guidance for the next year? We are targeting double-digit growth and EBITDA. So we are already explaining. Yeah, we, we are just targeting to maintain or slightly enhance the margin uh, for full year. And uh, going forward, as I mentioned uh, in my earlier remarks, that there are few levers available, especially on the distribution and operation side, uh, which will help us to further expand our EBITDA margin from here. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. We have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this call today. Very interesting set of questions.